Hey my little peachy roonies, hope you are feeling peachy today and welcome back to another episode of our Disney Princess Challenge. We are of course on the generation of Anna and Elsa who herald from Arendelle here. However, if you guys remember at the end of the last episode, we won't be doing all of our episodes within Arendelle anymore because after Elsa's coronation kind of went drastically wrong, she actually fled Arendelle, ran away, her magic was revealed and she was scared about the consequences. She was called a monster by Prince... Hans, not Hugo. I know I got that wrong a lot. I don't know why I want to call him Prince Hugo all the time. Prince Hans, and even though Anna tried to run after her, she didn't manage to keep up with her. Elsa ran far, far away, and without having to hide her magic anymore, she unleashed it onto the world and built herself a beautiful ice palace where she plans to spend out the rest of her days in exile. She also went ahead and sang probably one of the most famous Disney songs ever. Obviously not as good as I'll Make a Man Out of You, but still, she went ahead and sang Let It Go with a tear in her eye, she let go of the past and focused on herself being an absolute queen in her wonderful now ice palace. So what also happens in the movie is when her magic flies across the whole of the like snowy scape as she builds her palace. It also touches this little snowman here that she built outside before or that just was there outside before. In our game, of course, she went ahead and built it. But when her magic touches the snowman, the snowman goes ahead and kind of comes to life in Frozen. So I thought we would do something similar in our series as well. So here is Olaf reimagined as a person, as a boy. I breathed life into him. I was kind of like, should I do it as a dog or should I do it as a person? And I figured, why don't we do a go ahead and do it as a little boy? Elsa's magic also having some beautiful effects on the whole of Arendelle as well. We have northern lights. We have beautiful sun rays from her magic touching the landscape and making all things beautiful, proving that although her magic it can do harm. At its heart, it is good because she is as well. So of course, while Elsa's out here, resistance to the cold, living her best life, her sister Anna is obviously super, super worried about her and really like they connected a lot during the coronation before Elsa said you can't marry princess, uh, prince, sorry, not Hugo, Hans. You can't marry Prince Hans, you've only just met him, I don't trust him, which of course led to them having an argument, which led to Elsa losing her cool and her magic kind of flipping out. Oh my gosh, look at it in the sun rays. What? It was you guys that suggested I should change their footprint to eco, and I'm so glad you did, because literally, like, I'm blown away by how gorgeous everything looks. So, while well, Elsa's here just been, like, vibing in the beautiful, the beautiful sun rays in her amazing castle, which I'll just remind you guys how it looks on the inside. It's kind of designed very much the way that it appears in the movie. I'll get her to go ahead and toss a coin in here just to kind of wish for a reality where she is accepted. Oh my gosh, I love this build so much. Sunrays, you're beautiful, but don't you dare melt my snow. We are gonna head back to Arendelle because Anna is gonna go ahead and set off into the wilderness to try and bring her sister hope. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've downloaded like a cape. Here is uh, Prince Hans, who we know actually deliberately made these guys argue because he wanted to drive Elsa away, but still very hush hush for the moment. I've downloaded like a cape because I figured if I'm gonna send her into the cold, She's gonna need a cape. Although, does she go ahead and buy that from Kristoff, who I've also added to the game as well? Maybe so. So let's hold off on giving her the cape until we meet Kristoff. So where we left things was these guys is they ran as far as they could. They ran to the castle gates, but Elsa had already gone. Of course, in the movie, they end up, I think, getting to like a stream or something that they cannot cross, but I think Elsa can use her magic to cross. And here is the scene of where things went down. I know I, know I made Elsa freeze Hans. She didn't do that in the movie. We should cover the whole room in ice. Unfortunately, there's not a Sims 4 spell that does that, so I myself could not do that. But Anna is the, I mean, she's feeling pretty pretty flirty now. No, we don't want to use me feeling flirty. Fearless is much better. She's feeling fearless because she's like, I need to go and get my sister back. I have to try and save her. Of course, she's a princess that has spent the whole of her life inside these castle walls. Her mom was Sleeping Beauty, so she was even more inside the castle walls, but it's kind of like, we've very much kept inside of Arendelle. We don't really know what life is like like outside here and it's pretty cold where Frozen is set so she's gonna need some warmer clothes and she's also honestly kind of gonna need some help from somebody who knows their way around the snow and ice of Arendelle. Maybe someone who harvests ice from these uh, mountains? Maybe so, maybe so. So she's 
gonna go ahead and set off out of the castle for the first time properly. Because, I mean, I didn't even let these guys go to school. They basically stayed within our, the Arendelle walls. Apart from when we went ahead and got Anna cured from when Elsa froze her hair. Or froze the streak into her hair. Which, in fact, where is your streak in your hair? Uh, excuse me. How have you gone ahead and lost that? We'll add that back when we give you your cape if we can. So, I'm gonna get her to travel outside of the castle walls. Round to, like, Arendelle markets to try and see if she can find some gear and help to get her from here to wherever Elsa has gone. Because, of course, all she knows is that she's run off into the mountains. So, they're probably gonna need a bit of help. So, while she's in uh, the markets, she's gonna come across a little... Uh, what you call them? I was gonna say an ice hunter. But you don't really hunt ice, do you? An ice harvester. There we go. An ice harvester by the name of Kristoff. And, of course, he's trusty companion Sven the reindeer. So, Anna's gonna tell him all about her plan to go into the storm to search for her sister on her own, which Kristoff obviously thinks is a really dumb idea. Also, Kristoff was created by... I've taken all of these from the Claire Chiffon DPC, which is the hashtag for your guys' sims for this. Kristoff was created by Popic. SS. Sven was created by T Silent Simmer and Olaf, who we're gonna see again in a moment, but you saw right at the beginning when the snowman turned into a child, was created by Seely146. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoy seeing your similarinos in today's episode. Oh my gosh, look how cute this little kitty is behind. Anyway, stop being distracted. Anna is telling a story. She's like, I need to buy some warm stuff, please, because I am going into the wilderness. You can actually see the castle here, but just pretend it's further away than that, okay? He's like, this is a really stupid idea. I'm not gonna help you because you should not be doing this. You should not be going into the cold on your own. You look like you've never dressed for the cold in your life. Never mind. Go into the mountains. And she's like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, so you either help me or you don't. And I forgot that she's engaged. She's still engaged. So he's like, fine, whatever. You know what? I'm gonna help you out just because you are being... You're gonna do it irregardless and you don't know the mountains, so I'm gonna go ahead and join you on your journey because I feel like you might get hurt, so Sven and I will be by your side. However, let's at least put a cape on you, child, okay? So let's go in to modify and cast. I'm going to try and put the streak back in her hair as well. Let's go ahead and put a nice thick cozy cape on her so she can stay nice and warm even in the cold mountains. Okay, I mean, I mean that looks very warm. I think the cape, is it like a purpley kind of color like this? I think it's that color. And what I can also do, because it has a little bit of a strange top, is... Oh, it will overlay like the streak in her hair. I can put this like fur bit on the top. I mean, that is a full-on Game of Thrones fur, isn't it? Maybe that is a little bit too big. It also does get rid of her fringe, but it looks so cozy and warm. I don't know. Maybe she will have to lose a fringe for this episode because I think her staying warm is probably the most important thing. So we'll give her the warmest cape we can. I'm also gonna go ahead and change out her shoes. She's got these on at the moment, but I think we should go for some snow boots. Something like this should keep your little feeties warmer. Okay, I'm pretty happy we're gonna stay fairly warm. Kristoff, of course, is already dressed pretty warm. There is a hat that goes with this. However, can I show you guys why he cannot wear the hat with her because look what even is going on there? I don't know. But obviously, he can't wear the hat. But look how cute he is. He's so adorable. I love his nose. And he's got such a different build. Like, he's a big, like, tall, bulky, tough guy because he's a ice hunter. I'm gonna go for ice hunter because it makes him sound way more badass than an ice harvester. He's an ice hunter, okay? So he needs to be strong. So he has gone ahead and agreed to accompany her. He's kitted her out. I know in the movie, I don't think she buys the warm stuff from him. I think they're, like, in a store together. And then he ends up, like, getting kicked out of the store. Store, I think, but then when she sees she sees his sled, she wants to use his sled to go in to the mountains. And then from there on, they end up obviously uh, heading into the mountains together. She buys all his stuff, I think, to make him come with her. Oh, wow. And these two are actually getting on like a house on fire, which we obviously know is very cute. And I'm gonna have her meet little Sven as well. Uh, Sven, please turn around and come back right now. Sven is like, I'm not up for this. I mean, you guys have got a castle. I'd rather like chill out by the castle in front of a nice, warm, cozy fire. That sounds more like my castle kind of gig, but we're gonna make Anna meet Sven as well so that we're a whole a whole vibe together, a whole little trio heading in to the mountains. I mean, he's meant to be a reindeer. He's not actually meant to be a dog. So imagine him quite a lot bigger than this, but I still think the creator's done a pretty amazing job at making a very lovable and cute little reindeer pal. So does Sven pull the sled? I think maybe Sven pulls the sled. Obviously, I can't make a doggo do that. Also, if you're gonna wee, you need to go to the toilet before we begin the adventure, okay? That is a 
definite must. It's like, you know, before you ever leave, like, the house to go anywhere, your dad is like, Vince's toilet. You need to go to the toilet. Oh my gosh, your antlers. Where have your antlers gone? Give me a hot sec. <laughs> Sven just lost his antlers. It's fine, though, because I can show you guys the antlers that I got, which are these ones here from the Cullen Ofron. There's a few different ones. There's these ones. There's these ones. There's these ones. Those ones, to me, look more moosey, though. So I went for these ones, and I went for them in white because uh, reindeer antlers are a little bit lighter than, like, a regular deer's antlers. So let's go for these ones. There we go. He's now got his antlers again as well. And once Anna's gone for a wee, we can head and... Oh, who's that? Is that a uh, good old Princess Alexander? Wow, you have not aged a day, my son. Once uh, Anna has gone for a wee, we can head off down the tunnel and into the mountains together. Anna feeling fearless, which I think is a pretty good thing. I feel like she's uh, confident that they're going to go ahead and get Elsa back. Oh, and a little fauna fairy godmother. Just keeping an eye on things, making sure that everything is uh, working out as expected. She seems happy with what's going on. She's like, yes, you are staying true to the movie for the most part. So the little trio are heading off into the mountains. Actually looking so adorable all running here. It full on looks like they're like in the frozen landscape from the movie as well, which I kind of appreciate and love. Now, of course, one thing that they end up chatting a lot about is Anna tells Kristoff, I think about her engagement to Prince Hans and kind of like really like bigs him up like oh he's so romantic like we just met and he proposed and oh it's so wonderful and I think Kristoff is kind of like what that is the dumbest thing I ever heard I don't think he knows she's a princess I don't know but either way I don't think he holds back on his opinion on things so he kind of thinks the engagement's hilarious and all happening way too soon and very strange but basically the two of them end up getting to know each other having a little bit of banter all whilst exploring whilst trying to figure out where the castle is and oh look at this great banter wiping a tear of hilariousness out of each other's eyes and I don't know just kind of enjoying the whole journey which is kind of surprising because I mean I would be absolutely freezing I don't think I would be enjoying this very much I'd be like this is this is way too cold <gasps> and oh my gosh Cinderella has just died Cinderella Goldsmith has just died there you go gang along so yeah I mean although we're having great time bonding we're not really having much luck finding where Elsa has gone it's not the easiest thing to find a whole ice tower when you kind of have no idea where to even begin looking. Luckily though, however, we know a certain snowman that was brought back to life by Elsa's magic who could be of assistance. So while the two of them are kind of like out here just not knowing where to go, but seem to be again, the banter is flowing. Oh my gosh, she's actually feeling passionate. Feeling flirty. Oh, but she's still hyped about the whole engagement thing. They are lucky enough to look over the edge of the mountain and come across. Pretend he's a snowman. Man, okay. A snowman playing in the snow. Like, wow. Enchanted snowman. Whoever would have thought what is strange thing to occur? We mush run down and see him immediately. They look, they go shoo, shoo, down this way. So let's lead up Sven again. We can't leave Sven behind. In fact, you guys should become companions. And it's also getting dark. And with darkness comes danger and coldness. So chip, chap, chop. Let's get moving. And let's run down to try and capture this little snow boy before he gets away. Because it is, of course, none other than Olaf. Although Although, at this point in the movie, I understand he didn't have the nose. So, Anna gives him a carrot for his nose. I, of course, have already given him his little carrot-colored nose. However, for our game, because obviously we'll have to tweak things a little bit because he's not actually a snowman. He is a little boy. Instead, what we're going to do is find our little strangely cold-resistant boy out in the snow who says he has information about a certain magical lady in a magical tower, which is obviously very important to us. But he is, unfortunately, a a little bit hungry so what we're gonna do is give him a friendly gift of a carrot which oh wow he is now kind of begging for it he's what he wants the little carrot which of course he would put on his nose to make himself into like the little Olaf snowman. But we have to make things a little bit different in our game. So instead, he is going to go ahead and eat his brand new little carrot nose. There we go. Oh, wow. How are you holding that carrot, child? I do not even know. Interesting. Okay. So we're going to add him to our group. He is going to lead the way. He says he knows exactly where our magical tower is. So let's go ahead and head over here now. Lead the way, small snow boy. Okay. So they've made it. They're here. They're outside 
inside the magical tower. Do we have any northern lights? Does it occur every night? I don't know whether it does or not, but he's gone ahead and led us all the way here anyway. And Anna is about to see her sister again and beg her to come home. So let's go ahead and let's knock on the door. Visit Elsa with the whole gang. Frozen Elsa Ice Castle. Okay, nothing like making it sound real daunting. Let's go ahead and let's knock on the door. I mean, I really love what you've done with the place, Elsa. Is she gonna let us in? Oh my gosh, we do have the northern lights. I couldn't see them because I was them. I was in them. Look at me go. Oh, so beautiful. That is on my like list of things to do in real life. I really, really, really want to be able to see the northern lights. It's on my bucket list. The list of things I want to do before I die. But apparently you can see them from Scotland, which, you know, is just England's awesome hearts thing. So maybe I can go there and try and see them one day. Okay, so we're inside the house though. Where is, where is Elsa? Is she still singing Let It, Let it Go from here? No, she's not. Is she all the way at the very top of it? No, she's not there either. Elsa babes, where are you? <gasps> okay, here she is. Oh, Sven's sleeping outside. Sven loves the snow. She's actually happy to see her sister again. Okay, this is a really, really good start. Oh, wow, double hugs, double hugs. Sven just being like, okay, uh, I guess I'm not getting an introduction then. No, let's go ahead and say, she's gonna be like, by the way, wait, did I say Sven? This is Kristoff. He helped me get here. I wouldn't be able to find your castle without him. Also, did you know you have created a magical child? Just letting you know in case you did not realize. Oh, and also Sven has come in to meet as well. Do you want to say hello to Sven? Encouraged to meet with. What? What? Okay, I have to make this happen. Obviously. I was going to say meet Elsa, but this is way more fun. Are you just getting... What is happening now? Why are you just now in a rainbow bikini getting into that? I don't even know. I've never encouraged a dog to mate before, so I'm excited about this. Elsa, I don't think it's the time. Oh, apparently, apparently it definitely is the time. Really? Are we doing this? Are we actually doing this? Oh, okay. Anna's having a little cry. She misses Elsa being at home so much and she started to beg her to come home again. Elsa does not like that. She's like, I've told you I'm not going back home again. My coronation went horribly. I don't know why we're doing this in a pool, but I don't know. It's kind of a whole, it's a whole movement. I don't know why they didn't do this in the film. Anna's obviously very upset about that and they just seem to begin their arguing straight away. I'm gonna get Anna to insult her house and yard and be like, this isn't a home. This is an ice palace. Your home is with us back in Arendelle. You are a queen. Like, you need to come back. You need to go come back home for me. And also for all of your, like, your whole kingdom. Kristoff just being like, yeah, this is this is really awkward. Really awkward. I don't know why they have to do it in a pool, but okay. Now, at this point, I actually think Elsa ends up losing control again. And also freezing Anna's heart, which puts Anna on a little bit of a time frame. Oh, Ah, so what Anna actually does is tell Elsa that her creating this ice palace has also gone ahead and frozen all of Arendelle as well. And if she doesn't undo it, then people might die because we'll never get a spring. Like, the snow is never gonna thaw. We're never gonna have seasons again, and it's just gonna be frozen forever. Kristoff is like, this sounds like great business to me, but okay. And Elsa ends up being kind of horrified after realizing what she's done. So again, she's like freaked out. She's like, no, I don't want to go home. And Anna's like, you have to, you have to. And her magic ends up losing losing control again. And of course, she ends up freezing Anna yet again as well. Okay. Oh, wow. She's looking pretty tragic right now. So at this point, Anna's heart is actually frozen. That is why she's feeling the way she is. Her heart was hit by that spell and her heart has been frozen. At this point as well, Elsa kind of manifests this marshmallow, this big like scary monster to chase them out of the castle. I can't do that, but what I think I can do is go ahead and kick everybody out of my home as Elsa. So I'm gonna get her to go ahead and send home everyone. Get out of here. Even you, Sven, even you have to go as well. Look at Sven being like, haha, I'm not kicked out. You are also kicked out. You also need to leave, okay? Shoo. Leaving a poor sad Elsa in a tower all alone with yet again her powers having hurt her little sister and Anna, like, Anna and Sven at this point, let's face it, being chased by Marshmallow. But Sven is not Sven. Oh, why do I keep doing that? It's because his, his face looks like a Sven to me. Whilst the last time Anna nearly died, she was brought to the trolls by her parents. Kristoff was actually raised by the trolls. So he is going to know exactly what to do to save her, which is what we're going to be doing in the next episode. And she's also going to find out that to save her, she needs true love's kiss, which she's obviously going to think in she needs back in Arendelle with Prince Hans. So if you guys have enjoyed this episode, please give it a big cheeky thumbs up a thank you again to Seely146, Poppick SS, and T Silent Simmer for Sven, Kristoff, and Olaf who joined this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it some love. And I'll see you guys in another one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!